Welcome to the social show. It is so cold. I don't know how I even got out of bed. And um, I don't know if you're up out of bed yet. You probably are. <laughs> but it is way too cold. The weekend actually reminded me um, that uh, Joburg weather can be really brutal. Can be really brutal. But uh, I hope you're going to have a productive week. And you're not going to just, you know, blame the cold or blame the flu for not going to work. Go to work, do your job, and let's make the country better. Anyway, as usual, we're going to start the news uh, from top of the show. Yeah. According to the, Af- the South African Wind Energy Association, SAWA, the National Energy Regulatory Electricity Subcommittee has launched a formal investigation into ESCOM's conduct after it filed a complaint regarding ESCOM's failure to sign the Department of Energy's power purchase agreements. SAWA uh, declared a dispute during October 2016 requesting NERSA to undertake an investigation into ESCOM's continued will- unwillingness to honor the power purchase agreements. In in the event that ESCOM is found to be guilty of failing to comply with its license conditions, the Industry Association further requested NUSA to impose a penalty being 10% of its annual turnover per day, commencing on the day of the receipt of the notice of contravent- contravention. Sawa has also confirmed that in subsequent communications with NERSA, the association extended the complaint to include consideration of budget quote escalation effects. In other news, five local PET collectors in Harry Smith community have received waste recycling trolleys from the partnership of Boxmore Packaging and Petco, the organization responsible for for fulfilling the South African PET plastic industry role of extended producer responsibility. The five beneficiaries Beneficiaries of the trolleys will sell their PET to Vans Buy Back Center and this arrangement will allow uh, the waste pickers' progress to be tracked and their need for assistance to be monitored. Those involved in the initiative are committed to helping these individuals reach full, their full earning potential and stimulating awareness around the importance of recycling. Commenting on the project, Boxmore Harry Smith factory manager Neil Abersendale said their company is one of the biggest employers in Harry Smith and Therefore, they are both directly and indirectly partly responsible for the socioeconomic well-being of the community. Lastly, in our news aimed at raising awareness for healthy living for healthy living for school-aged children in South Africa, Merck uh, recently announced their launch of the Gen 100 program. The program is the second under the flagship We 100 initiative and Merck as consumers health business purpose that aims to help prepare society for a new era of humans living 100 to 100 healthy years. Thanks to the increase in life expectancy since 1945, today's young people are more likely to live for 100 years. However, there is no guarantee that the next generation will live these extra years in a healthy state. In order to live longer, healthy your lives um and for healthier lives, there needs to be improvements in overall well-being and more importantly, children's health so that the young people today will live healthier and longer in their older age. Gen 100 is specifically aimed at addressing health issues among South African school children. And for example, in 2014, an estimated 41 million children under the age of five years were overweight or obese and once considered a high income country problem, being overweight and obese is now on the rise and in low and and middle-income countries, particularly in urban settings. But anyway, uh, medical journals, data-driven visual aids, commissioned research, and support from key opinion leaders will help strengthen the Gen Gen 100 program. And the Gen 100 program will use materials, exercises, and challenges to create changes in kids' behavior. The program started started as a pilot uh, school activation on the 8th of May 2017 and will be launched in 40 different schools throughout the rest of 2017. For more more information about We 100 Initiative, go to uh, the Facebook page, which is www.facebook.com, the slash We 100, and you will find out a little bit more about them. And that concludes our news for the day. Have you ever thought about the power of social media? Social media has the power to make your business grow. Grow! Why don't you let us manage your social media? 
because our business is to see your business grow. Visit us at www.beastownmedia.co.za. Now, as I mentioned in the beginning of the show, that this past weekend was brutally cold and uh, it just made me really really lazy i just didn't want to do anything i just wanted to be home underneath my blankets um with the heater on with a good book and that's exactly what i did but i think again when you think about winter and you think about uh, what's happening in our streets you cannot not think about people that are homeless and people who don't have anywhere to go um during this 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 really really bad weather so today on the show i'm just going to speak a little bit about the kind of initiatives that are being rolled out now for homeless people especially during this time where it's really really horrible um to to be not to not to be inside of a shelter not to be warm not to have a blanket it is completely crazy and i mean it's only may and um it's already really like crazy cold i know in other parts of the country it's snowing already lesotho it was snowing um so there's a lot of different things that are going to be um really really i think uh destroying or, or, or really making the lives of those who don't have anywhere anywhere to go really difficult this time of the year we all know um in fact we are broadcasting from marvel um and 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 i think last year uh there was somebody a homeless person who died in one of our streets um because of the cold because they had nowhere to go and i mean homeless people are everywhere and i wonder how, how many of you have thought about it today when you woke up when you drove um to work when you walked to work whatever the case may be did you think about um the kind of weekend the homeless people in south africa had this weekend especially if you were in johannesburg it was crazy cold anyway homelessness in south africa dates back to the apartheid period obviously um increasing unemployment lack of affordable housing social disintegration and social and economic policies have been identified as uh, the contributing factors to the issue. And some scholars argue that solutions to homelessness in South Africa lie more within the private sphere than in the legal and political sphere. So basically, a lot of people have argued that homelessness is an issue that should be um, looked at by our corporates, um, an issue that can be really, really uh, can be impacted by people who are within the corporate space. And I think it's, it, it it is a, a valid argument. Um, I think, you know, government has done the whole RDP situation. I'm not saying it's enough, but I am saying that the RDB situation has has, has sort of helped a few people, although a lot of people haven't been helped. Um, if you did watch the news recently, there were a lot of riots. I know in Eldorado Park, as they were speaking about the kind of infrastructures that they need and the kind of inf- infrastructures that they don't, that are they aren't getting. And I mean, this time, it's a time where a lot of people get scared because they could lose their lives because of the crazy weather that's going to come. And, um, uh, you know, although I don't think there is a national uh, consensus as to why there are so many homeless people in South Africa, but researchers have relied on, you know, individual studies of homeless people in particular cities. And the South African uh, homeless population has been estimated at approximately 200 thousand people are on our streets um and that's crazy to think about when you think two hundred thousand people are without homes are also um unable to feed themselves are unable to um get themselves any kind of medication any kind of medical help it's just really really sad and i just thought today would be would be an, a good day to actually just think about them and see what we can do as as a country um what we can do as communities to sort of really make it a little bit better for them. I know we can't help every single person who's homeless and doesn't have anywhere to go, but what we can do is contribute to programs that are really trying to make sure that their winter isn't as bad as uh, it's going to be. It's going to be really, really, really bad. Um, I know in Cape Town, Cape Town actually has one of the highest rates of homelessness in all of the cities. It has over, I think in 2015, it had over 7,000 people who are on the streets. And I think now, probably doubled or at least nine thousand people um are are without homes and um there's actually a really really um cool i just read about this actually recently about um um you know i don't know if you know of haven night shelter now near haven night shelter is one of the only uh one of the biggest shelter um, 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 charities in Cape Town. And they've launched their they've relaunched actually their first bed voucher um 
uh, program uh, since uh, it's been like five years since this this voucher program had been launched and it is based within 15 Cape Town based shelters now over the years what happens is that the bid for a ticket system has heralded a number of successes but also it has also experienced its fair share of hiccups right so basically what happened was um, people were encouraged to buy these sort of tickets and then these tickets they'd rather give these tickets to the to the um, homeless people um, so that they can use them to go into to a shelter now it's about 10 rand a night to sleep at a shelter also remember at haven for i think heaven night shelter the first 10 days are free for you to sleep if you're homeless and then after that you have to sort of bring at least 10 rand or um some sort of money for you to carry on sleeping and what they're doing now is that they're selling these tickets to people to say give them these tickets rather than the 10 rand because they don't usually use it for the right causes um uh, so that's basically what the concept is about, um, this ticket a bed system. And basically this innovation uh, uh, was started by Hassan Khan from the Haven Night Shelter. And basically it's based on the premise that no one should have to sleep on the street. And I, I completely agree. No one has to sleep on the street. But if they do, let it be at least a, a better weather. I, I can't even imagine how it would be to sleep on tar. Um uh, with you know this just weekend going had going past i couldn't even imagine being outside for five minutes let alone the whole day the whole night um it's just it's just too much to think about but anyway the program was actually started in 2012 and allowed concerned Kiptonians to buy vouchers as i said for 10 to 12 rand a piece um and you give them to beggars and rather than money and it enables them to really get out of that self-destructive lifestyle because a lot of the time you know when you give a beggar any kind of money especially one that isn't necessarily um a sober when you give them that money that that money is not going to go to any kind of food it's probably going to go to a drug or something that's going to make them forget or try and be numb to the experience that they're feeling anyway um the voucher does cover the fee for the shelter and um uh, I think that's that's something to go far from. And I think that's an, a really great system. I think it's a system that could work in Johannesburg as well. Um, you start really looking at whether or not they actually want to be safe and want to be warm because it's one thing to uh, have a million uh, shelters open but nobody really wants to go there. Um, it's very important that it's a, it's a thing that they know they have it and they have that sort, sort of psychological thing that says you have a... You have access to a bed if you wanted to you are the one that's that's really um standing in front of your own your own um, um, um safety and i think that's when you make it more of their responsibility than just giving them some sort of money to compensate a few hours with some sort of drug you give them that that voucher to say you have the option to sleep well tonight and you are choosing not to so you cannot um you cannot say that not not a lot's being done. You cannot say that people don't care. It is you standing against yourself. And 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 again, um, a lot of the issues around homelessness is you know drug abuse, violence, and a lot of situations that people are running away from, and running towards uh, you know um, not being judged and and being around people who are doing the same thing. And so a lot of you find that a lot of homeless people do have homes. A lot of homeless people do have a space where they came from. It's just specific issues had made them leave so it's very important that the responsibility is still on them i think i think that's very important there are people who you know are homeless because of you know they their house is catching on fire especially if you think of um the shelter uh, the shanty towns in 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 johannesburg especially in, i mean everywhere in south africa um a lot of it is not necessarily just because they ran away it's because they really don't have anywhere to go but they know that they need to make money somewhere somehow but anyway um hassan khan from the haven night uh let me just get the name it's uh the Haven Night Shelter has uh, spoken about obviously regurgitating and making sure that they 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 bring back this really amazing initiative about a uh, beta ticket, and um, they just said you know he said that you know he realized that they needed something further to encourage homeless people to go to the shelter in the first place. It can't just be. Um, uh, uh, money, money, they don't even they, that money to them does not necessarily translate to a bed that 10 rent to them could translate to food could translate to other things, bets anything that could be happening on the streets that you know nothing of, so the, the voucher is just 
for their safety. And I like that about it. And he also said that, you know, the Haven really needed uh, an incentive for the, the homeless people to go. Um, because if you talk to guys, um, uh, he says that there's a, all kinds of abuse or something else that's keeping them from coming to the shelter. Um, so that's very important to note that um, he says it, it doesn't really help getting somebody in the shelter when they, you know, it, it, if he knows that he can get into the shelter. All the, 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 the voucher does is remind him that the shelter is there and that at least they have a meal. At least they have a place to shower, a place to trade coal, um, their old clothes for freshly laundered ones, a place for them to eat, a place for them to sleep. And that's what the program is for. Um, and I think that's important. I think that's an amazing, amazing initiative. And I don't see enough of that in, in, in Johannesburg. I don't, I'm actually not sure about other places in South Africa. Um, there's not enough investigation as to how homeless people, the kind of options homeless people have, um, and how many of them are willingly going to those to those options, and what is the issue? Is the issue more psychological than it is physical? Is it an issue of uh, drug abuse? Is it an issue of abuse in general, or is it an issue of not there, there not being enough shelters, not being enough beds for people to to get um, warm and to get uh, to feel safe? Also, you must remember that a majority of the people who are homeless are children. So for me, it really boggles my mind when I think of children saying no to a warm bed, a meal and clothes. It means there's something completely devastating at the heart of it that is um, some sort of drug abuse, some sort of... Um, some sort of uh, 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 comfortability with uh, suffering, some sort of comfortability with not having, and some sort of comf comfortability with um, uh, fending for yourself. And kids can't... I, I, that's not the world I imagine. That's not the world I imagine for a lot of children. I mean... Um, that's not what I want, what I would like a child to think of or even experience, but also think of as something that is normal and normalizing that kind of behavior, normalizing that kind of suffering. It's really, really, really scary to think about. Um, um, also, what happens with the ticket process is that uh, there's a sort of a, a history that is portrayed on the card. So whatever shelter you go to, they say, oh, this is why if, if you left, you say why you left. You write down what happened. If Because sometimes there's been a big backlash on these shelters saying children are being abused in them. Children are being used because um, a lot of the shelter keepers, a lot of the people that are staying there and volunteering their time know how vulnerable these kids are. So abuse becomes a thing that they're so that's everywhere which means a lot of kids will run from shelter also because of that which is so important that these cards then uh, uh, allow them to write down a history or at least uh, put down an idea as to why they left a specific shelter and um, also if they lost their lost their ID card or how or whatever the case may be they they can show um, their history they can show where they've been what needs to happen because a lot of the time you find that you find these kids and they go into the shelter and nobody knows what they've gone through nobody knows their thinking process and how they um and how they actually are psychologically and so these cars also help keep track of what they've been through um whether it was a drug issue if they were in a drug program uh, a drug rehab program of course if they you know went through something if somebody has a personal chip with them if they feel like someone abused them they're able to sort of uh put that down on the card and that card will then also uh, allow the shelter that they are at to understand the kind of history that they have because a lot of the time they're either you know, really drugged up. They can't even speak about the experience, and they also don't think anybody cares. So I think it's a it's a good way of um, really making a, a child remember their worth, remember who they are, remember that somebody cares about your history, somebody cares about the kind of experiences that you've gone through, and it's unfair that those experiences aren't um, aren't recorded and aren't uh, made important. Um, so there's a lot of things that they're doing. They take the time out at the Haven to to check each in take check on you and check on 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 your job search they also make sure that you are uh, in those 10 days how can we get you a job where can you work do you want to work and i must say there's so many times when a few me and my friends actually do this quite a lot especially in the Bramfontein area there's a lot of young kids a lot of young kids without any home without homeless young kids who are begging and um a friend of mine did try and and and, and get one kid to um a shelter and also just um, sort of 
be their bigger brother and just sort of help them out where they could and send the money. And uh, the kid went, I think the kid did go to the, to the, to the shelter, but didn't even stay for, I think four hours after that was back on the street. And the next day, next few weeks, we kept seeing him and kept reminding him that he should go back. We're going to try our best to get him the help he needs. Um, but it, it was like talking to a brick wall. So there's a lot of issues around how to communicate with the homeless, how to communicate with kids that are homeless, how to get them out of their um, um, constant, um, 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 you know, this sort of 360 circle that they find themselves, poverty circle, that they they contribute to as well because of the, 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 the thinking of, I can't get out. There's no way I can get out. There's no way anybody's going to understand me. There's no way anybody's going to, want me back there's no way anybody's going to think of me um or, or, or want to help me out i think also that that issue and that abandonment issue is really really big when it comes to um homeless um children but anyway if you are trying to help somebody who is homeless or you have that willingness to get someone off the streets please call um the haven um they definitely do believe they believe no one should live on the streets and they 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 do their best to make sure that the uh, you know less and less children uh, are 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 living in such horrible conditions in the streets and 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 part of these gangs and part of these cliques and part of these drug um ish, uh, mules and all that kind of thing their vision is to they believe in the future of communities and organizations and governments that can create the supportive network to ensure that no one is forced to live on the streets um the haven night shelter welfare organization provides temporary shelter physical care social welfare and family reunification services to adult homeless people in the Western Cape. And um, they started quite a while ago. They were established in 1978, um, but were only registered as a non-profit organization in 2000 and uh, are now a public benefit organization in 2004. And I think it's very important that we support these as corporates. We support more homeless shelters and not support them just financially. We support them by saying, you know what, these are the programs that have worked. These are the programs that can get... Um, kids out of out of trouble uh get the necessary the right um social welfare um gurus involved get the right people to counsel them get the right people to talk to them let them not feel like it's all far-fetched and it's all far from each other make sure that um they have the right programs that can keep, keep the kids there keep the, keep the kids there um but also adult homeless people i think there's a lot of that that to be spoken about there's a lot of um and adults who really want to leave who really want to be um empowered in some ways and i think it's very important that we we look at those um uh, at those people and we we try and see how we can help as people as as corporates as as ngos as um uh teachers it's our responsibility to make sure that no one has to really live on the streets i mean it is going to be super super cold and this winter is going to be crazy so it's very important that we don't um that we don't take it for granted and we try our best to make sure that uh, kids are homeless people receive the kind of attention that they, they need, especially during this time. So anytime you see somebody who's homeless, anytime you feel as though um, you could do something or you could try and do something, call up the Haven, call up a few of the shelters, call up your local church and see how they can help um, with the soup kitchens. They're great. I know there's a lot of soup kitchens that are coming up at the moment. I know there's a lot of um, uh, homeless and, and uh, programs that are going to be coming up at the moment. Let's just make sure that we are we know what we can do and how we can help those we see every single day. The mothers we see every single day with kids on their backs, um, little babies. I, I, I still can't understand that. And I don't think we should live in a, in a country that still understands that. Um, so it's very important that we do our best uh, to, 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 do, to, to contribute. I know there's another organization. It's, it's homeless.org.za. And what they do is, again, they also aim to restore the self-worth and the self-esteem of adult homeless persons by addressing their spiritual, physical, and emotional needs. In doing so, they aim to help rehabilitate them back into society. That's homeless.org. Call them, email them, find out where they are, see how you can work with them, see how you can volunteer. And they said, you know, there's numerous ways in which you can get involved with U-Turn um, Ministries. It's actually called U-Turn Ministries. There's also a program called um, U-Turn Ministries where the involvement um, 
enables to bring some sort of wholeness to the homeless and you can make a positive impact don't just feel obliged to give them five rand two rand because you see that they're cold and you see that there's no place um where they can go do more do more uh get involved with the homeless uh organization try and and and, and see if you can't give a hundred rand a month to a kid and the benefit in their lives and and let's see if we can't uh really lessen the number of people on the streets lessen the number of people who are going to be dying this 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 winter on the streets um i know there's a lot of blanket drives that are going to be working out you've got 67 days um of mandela uh, coming up and i know you've got 67 blankets which is one of my favorite organizations too where they knit blankets for the homeless knit blankets for those who are needy it's another way of contributing to the homeless um Find ways in which you can do your little bit, even if it's a warm meal a day to your local uh, homeless person. Do your bit. There's so much to do. There's so much out um, in the in the world to do. There's so much you can be part of. There's so much you can do to make sure that um, people are safe. People are, um, are are warm this winter. And just speaking from my experience this morning and this weekend, I I feel obligated to be part of um, some sort of organization, either the Haven or a homeless.org or a church or anything along those lines that can really help um, a homeless person get out of the streets, homeless person get something to eat or get warm. It is my resolution it is what i want to do but anyway that concludes our show for the day um it was really lovely speaking to you and i really hope you feel obligated to do something about the homeless person down the street the homeless person at your spa the homeless person at your um pick and pay i really hope there's something that you will be doing to 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 help their lives a little bit better but anyway we'll be back again tomorrow with an an equally enticing show we'll have a few guests this week so i'm so excited about that thank you for listening Live from 27 boxes in the heart of Melville, this is brandlive.co.za.